Tonight, the solar system holds its breath. 3. I slash Atlas, the third confirmed interstellar visitor, is about to brush past Mars at just 0.19 astronomical units as every Mars orbiter races to catch its secrets. But this is not just another flyby. The object's blazing emerald coma, erratic microaccelerations, and carbon dioxide rich chemistry have already shattered every rule in the cometary playbook. Earth's instruments are about to go blind, leaving only a handful of Mars probes between us and the truth. Is 3i slash Atlas a bizarre comet, or something engineered rewriting the definition of alien? As the countdown hits zero, the clues, fragmentation, unnatural pulses, spectral oddities, could change everything we think we know about visitors from the stars. Will the next hours reveal the extraordinary or prove science still holds the final word? Six hours. That's the length of the window before Earth's view of three slash Atlas vanishes behind the sun. At 0.19 astronomical units from Mars, about 28 million kilometers, the interstellar visitor races past the red planet just as Earth's instruments go dark. The blackout isn't a technical glitch or a failure of planning, it's geometry. Mars, for a brief span, becomes the solar system's only vantage point. Every major asset in orbit, MAVEN, Mars Express, ExoMars TGO, shifts to high cadence observation, their teams running pre-scripted drills and improvising on the fly. Inside the MAVEN control center, the so-called Red Watch crew takes the lead. These are the operators trained for contingency, the ones who run decision ladders for every possible anomaly. In the hours before the blackout, they rehearse rapid switches between standard science and burst mode spectroscopy, ready to pivot if a sudden flare or debris alert crosses their screens. Backup configurations are loaded, cross-checks run with TGO and Mars Express staff. Every command is logged, every data packet gets a redundant copy. There's no room for a single point failure when the rest of the solar system is blind. The schedule is merciless. Mars Express will snap broadband images every few minutes, stacking exposures to catch even the faintest sign of fragmentation or course change. TGO spectrometers sweep the coma for spectral lines that don't belong. MAVEN's particle sensors and magnetometers monitor for ionospheric ripples, anything that hints at an unnatural interaction. Each spacecraft's power and telemetry budgets are stretched to the limit, with observation slots negotiated down to the minute. If a burst of debris threatens, Mars Express is ready to switch into safe observe mode, sacrificing data for survival. The abort threshold sits just 30% above the last measured density spike. Earth's blackout interval isn't just a communications gap, it's a test of the entire planetary science apparatus. The Red Watch Coalition acts as the nerve center, relaying commands and data through narrow relay windows, prioritizing instrument health, and coordinating with surface assets like Perseverance and Jurong. In the control rooms, clocks count down in parallel to the comet's approach. Outside, amateur arrays listen for the first sign of a photometric spike, ready to upload data to the global alert network. For these six hours, the fate of the observation and the answer to whether 3 i atlas is a cosmic oddity or something engineered rests on the ability of a handful of orbiters and their teams. The urgency is real, the margin for error razor thin. As the window narrows, every second becomes a potential turning point. A string of unexplained signals has followed 3i slash Atlas since its first detection. The earliest hints came from a backyard telescope in Pune, India, where Priya Rao, a citizen astronomer, noticed a repeating pulse in the light curve, brightening and fading with a rhythm no comet handbook could explain. Her post drew attention but the oddities only multiplied as professional arrays joined the watch. Photometric records show the object's brightness surging at intervals too regular for random outgassing. The pulses, spaced by nearly identical gaps, defy the jittery one-off flares seen in typical comet activity. Each spike arrives with a sharp onset and a clean decay, as if switched on and off by some unseen hand. Even as the object approached the sun, the periodicity held unblurred by distance or solar glare. Spectroscopy brought a second surprise. Instead of familiar water vapor lines, the dominant signature in every spectrum was carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide to water ratio topped eight to one, 
an order of magnitude above the most volatile rich comets. This chemical fingerprint is so rare that laboratory models struggle to match it. Alongside the carbon dioxide, the coma glows emerald green, peaking at 516 nanometers. The color persists across instruments, confirmed by both ground-based and orbital spectrographs. The usual suspects, C2 swan bands, carbon monoxide plus emissions, can't account for the intensity or the stability of the hue. Nickel emission lines, especially at 337 and 380 nanometers, outshine iron by factors of four or more, a reversal of what's seen in every known solar system comet. Imaging and polarimetry add yet another layer. The coma's green light is matched by a deep negative polarization branch, a trait more common to certain asteroids than to icy wanderers. Dust tails reveal grains larger and slower than standard comet dust, with trajectories that resist easy modeling. These grains drift in a broad, lazy arc, as if released by a mechanism that doles out mass in measured bursts, not chaotic jets. Astrometric tracking, meanwhile, records micro-accelerations, tiny course corrections that don't line up with any known outgassing profile. Each nudge coincides with a brightness pulse, suggesting a link between light and motion. No single anomaly stands alone, but together they sketch a portrait of an object that resists every simple category. Every dataset, photometry, spectroscopy, astrometry, feeds the growing dossier of mysteries. The evidence is in, waiting for an explanation that fits all the facts at once. Most planetary scientists began with the simplest tools at hand, physics and chemistry. Four main hypotheses, each grounded in established models, have been tested against the growing dossier of three i atlases oddities. The first points to chemistry shaped in the deepest cold. In this view, three i atlas formed far from any star, where water freezes out and carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and even rarer ices dominate. Comets from the Oort cloud hint at this kind of chemistry, but none have shown a carbon dioxide to water ratio so extreme, topping 8 to 1. Still, the argument runs, interstellar space is vast, and our catalog is tiny. A single outlier could rewrite the boundaries of cometary chemistry. The second model turns to structure. Volatile pockets, deep reservoirs of trapped gases, could erupt as sunlight seeps through the crust. These pockets, if distributed unevenly, might explain the rhythmic pulses in brightness. Laboratory simulations show that even small temperature differences can trigger sudden jets, sometimes repeating if the layers are stratified. Regularity, though rare, is not impossible in a body shaped by billions of years of cosmic weathering. Dust dynamics offer a third explanation. The coma's emerald glow and the presence of large, slow-moving grains could result from unusual dust composition or size distribution. Solar wind and Mars's weak magnetic field might shape the tail, herding charged grains into broad arcs. Models of comet tails show that in certain geometries, heavy grains lag behind, drifting in lazy curves that mimic measured bursts. The negative polarization branch, more typical of asteroids, could hint at compact, carbon-rich grains rather than icy fluff. Finally, some point to the limits of our models themselves. With only two previous interstellar visitors on record, every new arrival tests the edges of simulation. Micro-accelerations and synchronized pulses may reflect physics not yet captured in our software, subtle interactions between sunlight, volatile release, and tumbling motion. In this view, the anomalies are not evidence of intent, but reminders of how much remains uncharted. For each puzzle, the scientific community demands that every natural explanation be exhausted before considering anything more exotic. Mars, for these six hours, becomes the solar system's only observatory. Three orbiters, MAVEN, Mars Express, and ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter, form the backbone of the evidence chain. Each brings a distinct set of instruments, each tasked with capturing a different signature of 3i slash Atlas's passage. MAVEN's Imaging Ultraviolet spectrograph, tuned for faint emissions, sweeps the sky for ultraviolet traces in the comet's tail, especially signs of fragmentation or abrupt outbursts. Its particle counters and magnetometers running at maximum cadence watch for ripples in Mars's ionosphere, 
a sudden spike in charged particles, or a magnetic field twist, could signal that something more than natural chemistry is at work. If the comet's dust or plasma interacts with the atmosphere, MAVEN's sensors will be the first to register the disturbance. Mars Express, with its visual monitoring camera and spy cam spectrometer, focuses on direct imaging. Stacked broadband exposures track the comet's coma, hunting for evidence of splitting or shape change. The spectrometer, scanning from ultraviolet to infrared, searches for spectral lines that don't belong, unexpected emissions or missing water vapor. Its plasma analyzer, Aspera-3, monitors for energetic ions that could betray a non-standard interaction between the comet and the Martian environment. ExoMars TGO's NOMAD and ACS spectrometers probe the coma for trace gases, hunting for isotopic ratios or molecular fingerprints that defy solar system norms. KSSIS, the high-resolution imager, attempts to catch fragmentation events or dust jets in progress. Each instrument's data is logged with exact timing, cross-referenced in real-time among the teams. On the surface, Perseverance and Jurong rovers listen for indirect signs, unusual dust fallout, atmospheric changes, even auroral glows on the horizon. Their environmental sensors and cameras provide a backup layer of evidence, though with less sensitivity than the orbiters above. The checklist is explicit. Fragmentation pattern, trajectory shift after a flare, spectral or radiation lines that resist explanation, isotopic ratios outside solar norms, and any sign of engineered synchronization in pulses or accelerations. Every anomaly flagged by one asset must be confirmed by another. No single reading is enough. Only converging evidence from multiple instruments and perspectives can move the needle from the realm of the unusual to the truly unprecedented. Every byte of data streaming from Mars faces a gauntlet of checks before it enters the scientific record. The first stop is redundancy. Each packet relayed from orbiters is duplicated, time-stamped, and logged by independent ground stations on both sides of the Atlantic. This system guards against solar interference, transmission errors, and the rare but real risk of data corruption during the blackout. Telemetry delays, sometimes stretching to hours as signals bounce through relay satellites and deep space antennas, add another layer of uncertainty. Mission teams prioritize anomaly packets, those flagged for possible fragmentation, spectral outliers, or abrupt trajectory changes, routing them through rapid cross-verification routines. No single sensor or team can clear an alert alone. Every candidate event is double-checked by at least two instruments, with raw data posted to open archives as soon as bandwidth allows. Chain of custody protocols extend beyond numbers. If a dust grain or ice fragment is detected by an orbiter's collector, planetary protection officers step in. These specialists enforce strict handling rules. Samples are sealed, barcoded, and logged with digital hashes, requiring sign-off from both NASA and JAXA before analysis proceeds. The goal is clear provenance. Any organic signature found in Martian regolith or atmosphere after the flyby must be traceable. Future life detection missions depend on knowing what arrived from 3i Atlas and what belongs to Mars. Even the metadata, time, location, instrument calibration, is captured in tamper-proof ledgers, ensuring that every odd reading can be audited years from now. Outside the control rooms, a parallel network hums to life. Amateur astronomers, from backyard arrays in Pune to robotic telescopes in Arizona, upload photometry and astrometry to shared databases. The first public alert of a photometric spike may come from a citizen scientist, but professional teams now triage these uploads in real time. Only after cross-instrument confirmation do agencies issue official bulletins, urging patience and caution. Extraordinary claims will wait for extraordinary evidence. Messaging plans, drafted in advance for every scenario, stress transparency without sensationalism. The public pipeline is wide open, but every step is designed to build trust, redundancy, verification, and chain of custody, all in service of a verdict the world can believe. Inside the Red Watch control room, the decision matrix sits at the heart of every conversation. Three branches, conservative, hazardous, extraordinary, 
define the possible verdicts for 3i slash Atlas as data streams in from Mars. The conservative path holds if every anomaly can be mapped to rare but natural comet behavior, volatile pockets erupting in sequence, dust grains shaped by unfamiliar chemistry, and microaccelerations that fall within the outer limits of known physics. Hazardous becomes the ruling if fragmentation or debris, clouds cross critical thresholds, mass loss above 10%, or unpredictable course changes that threaten Mars orbiters. In that case, instrument safing and data triage take priority over science. The extraordinary branch stands apart. It demands at least two independent, statistically significant anomalies, synchronized pulses matched by microaccelerations or spectral lines that defy any known chemical model, confirmed by separate teams and instruments. No single signal, no matter how strange, is enough. The rule is simple. Only converging evidence can open the door to engineered possibilities. Every operator knows the stakes. In these hours, the matrix is not just a chart, it is the playbook for what happens next in planetary science. Draft protocols now require that every byte of data from an interstellar flyby moves up a rapid release ladder, public within hours, not months. The days of embargoed comet telemetry are over. NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency have all endorsed mirrored archives, where raw and annotated data flow to open servers as soon as ground stations confirm integrity. Automated pipelines flag outliers for instant review while calibration notes ride alongside the numbers. For Mars orbiter teams, emergency procedures now include compressed, high-cadence relays during any transient event, with follow-up dumps of full-resolution spectra and images. Citizen science is no longer a sideline. Registered amateur networks from Pune to Patagonia upload photometry and astrometry directly into vetted pipelines. Machine learning routines sort, cross-check, and queue these uploads for professional triage, ensuring that the first alert, sometimes from a backyard array, can trigger official scrutiny within minutes. On the planetary protection front, the Committee on Space Research's latest draft mandates anomaly tags on every biosignature reading post-encounter and chain of custody logs for any dust or organic sample. These reforms are designed not just for the next three I slash Atlas, but for every future messenger from beyond the sun, locking in transparency, trust, and a global playbook for the unknown. On October 3rd, 2025, as 3i slash Atlas passed within 0.19 astronomical units of Mars, every major Mars orbiter and rover turned its full attention to the sky. Over 40 hours of high cadence data were relayed from MAVEN, Mars Express, and ExoMars TGO, capturing the object's emerald glow, pulsed brightening, and carbon dioxide heavy spectrum, signals never before seen from any known comet. While natural models explain much, the pattern of microaccelerations and the synchronized pulses remain without a definitive cause. The raw data, released for open analysis, are now part of the public record, but key questions, such as the true source of the emissions and whether engineered activity played any role, are still unresolved. What is certain, this encounter has driven new protocols for interstellar monitoring and set a standard for transparency. Whatever 3i slash Atlas proves to be, its Mars flyby has changed how we prepare for and talk about visitors from beyond our solar system.